Hey you guys! So with 4th of July coming up, I'm starting to think about outdoor parties and family reunions and barbecues and all that fun stuff. And it's super fun to decorate with red, white, and blue for summer because it's, it's just so festive and it's almost like the most fun you can have with colors and glitter before Christmas, I think. Because you can really, it's almost like there's no, there's no such thing as too much for 4th of July. You can go all crazy with your glitter and your embellishments and your shapes and your bold colors and your patterns and everything. So for us paper crafters, that's like a dream come true because you know how we all love to embellish stuff. Another thing I love about patriotic projects is the old, like, vintage small town feel you can give things. So it's really fun to use rosettes because those are definitely vintage and they're so fun right now. So I'm going to show you how to make one of those if you've never made one before. You're going to love it. I found the cutest, cutest patriotic paper at Archivers. It's by Bow Bunny. This is all I have left because I cut up everything that I had. But it's just a really cool collection of awesome like textures and patterns and all that stuff. And I also treated myself to all the really cute little embellishments that go with it, which I totally loved. And I had fun trying to use as much as possible. And I also got a bunch of glitter paper and I got all different, all different brands and thicknesses. And this time I used my Black Cat Lynx again and it cut all the glitter paper really awesome. Even the, the Michaels brand glitter paper, which was like really, really thick, almost like chipboard. So if you are cutting it on a Cricut, you might want to use the deep cut blade or something. Um, and also while I was at Michaels, I found this really cute patriotic paper by Kay and Company, which I did not use this time, but if you are looking for some patriotic paper, there's also that option. So put on your favorite summer movie, let's get in the summer spirit and get crafting. I actually watched two movies while I made this project. I watched Summer Magic with Haley Mills and she's also in Pollyanna and they're both like kind of cheesy because they're 1950s Disney movies but, oh 1960s I should say. So pop in a movie or turn on some music and get your iced tea and let's sit down and put these fun projects together. First I'm going to make a rosette. And there's different sizes in this kit. This one is a tiny one on a cupcake topper thing. And this one is a big one. I've got all three pieces cut out already. And if you're wondering about sizing, when you're looking at your rosette piece this way, I'm sorry, this way, um, this, however wide this is, is about how wide your final rosette's gonna be. So if you wanna make a different size than what I've got going here. So first I'm gonna put glue along this part. And I'm going to scrunch it up and I'm going to fold it in half, making sure to line up these two parts that are getting glued together. And you definitely want to have some clothespins handy because you just want to let it dry like that. Otherwise, it's, you're going to have to hold it for a long time. So I'm just going to do the same thing to the other two parts of the rosette. While these are drying, I just wanted to show you that these are three different colors, which is fun, red, white, and blue. But you can also do all the same color, like this is all the same color. There's three parts still, but they're all the same. So now I'm just going to take all three of these pieces and just glue them together like this. And I'm going to let them dry with clothespins because they want to pull apart from each other. So since this paper is not solid core, it's white core, you can see on the edge where it's been cut, you can see the white showing through. And since it's red, white, and blue, it's kind of cool. But if you wanted, you could also just take an ink pad. I could take a blue ink pad and rub it on the blue. Or I could just do brown on all of them. And I have to kind of rub it around to really cover up the white. But either way, whatever you feel like doing. Now this piece in the middle just covers up the center. And I'm just going to glob a whole ton of glue on the back and just let gravity do the work of fixing it. So I'm going to set this down to let it dry, but you can see that I used my cuddle bug on the star and on this. And I also like how this glitter paper looks behind the star, because anything for 4th of July with glitter is going to look awesome. So I'm going to make my three-dimensional star now, and there's five pieces shaped like this and five like this. And first I'm just going to put glue on this tab here. And I'm going to fold it over 
and just let it dry. Now I'm just going to glue this little piece right here to add a little accent. And you could definitely use this star for Christmas also, which would look really cool. And you could also make it really big because you're only limited by how large this piece is, which this one's pretty tiny. So if you made that like even as large as 10 inches, 10 inches wide or tall, then your star is going to be pretty big. All right, I've got all five points of the star ready to go. And I'm just going to put glue on these tabs and put them inside like so. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way around until I've got my whole star formed. I've got my star formed and the only part that's missing glue is just this last tab so I'm just going to stick the tip of my glue up in there and just glue it as best I can. Just a little dot is fine I think. So the star is all flat and to make it three dimensional I'm just going to push it together like so. Pretty cool and I think that would be awesome for Christmas. Okay, now we're going to put together the hat and I've already put together the top because the bottom is pretty much the same thing. And I've got all my pieces cut out here for the bottom, which is this part and this, and this is the liner because there's a little liner that goes inside just to cover up the points. First, I'm going to take this big piece and I'm going to glue it together right on the tab. Now I'm going to flip this piece over and push down all the little points and then I'm going to put glue on all of them and put this guy like so. I put glue on each of the tabs in like a little T format to make sure that the glue gets right up to the edge but also out to the pointy part. And this is shaped like an oval so I want to put the top of the oval or the bottom of the oval at the seam here where the paper comes together. And then I'm just going to push it around until the edges are lined up all the way around. Then I'm going to flip it over and just push down on the tabs from the other side. And then just to cover up those funny looking points, I'm going to put this liner inside. So the bottom of the hat here is actually five layers thick because I wanted it to be nice and thick. It feels like chipboard. Then I'm just going to Put some glue here and glue it right in the center. Now this would definitely be cute to put some little candies in or even like a stack of cookies for your neighbor or something. All kinds of cute little stuff you could put inside. Okay, then the top just goes on like so. Super cute. Now I might actually add a, a ribbon or something too. So I've got all the pieces cut out here for my U. And I'm just going to show you the U, not the S and the A because the A is super simple and the S is about the same as the U. Each of these pieces with the tabs on it has little guides along the top. For example, this one has three little circles up here and you can find its partner with the three little circles over here and you're going to glue those two together. This one has one circle at the end, so here's the other one with one circle and I'll glue those together. So I'm going to glue them all together in a long strip. So I've got my whole entire strip put together and as you can see the little guides are all matched up and this is ready to start going onto the face of the U. So this is the face of the U and the left side is a little bit wider than the right side so you want to make sure you have the right face not the back and the back is obviously the mirror image. Now you want to flip over your long strip and fold over all the tabs that have the guides on them. That's going to be the side that you're gluing on first to the back, to the back of the face of your U. This is the face of my U and it's face down and I'm going to be gluing these onto it first. And first you want to get an idea of where your letter's going here. And if I kind of fold it, I can see 
where things are going to be going. Now I want to start at the top, these top corners, I'm going to start there. Just because it's easy to see where it goes and there should be no problem to just start there. So I've got the top piece glued on here and I'm just going to glue on this long part next. I think it's easier to start with the easier parts and then let the rest of it kind of guide itself into place. So I'm just going to go all the way around the whole U, just carefully taking my time and gluing these tabs in place so that the edge of the corner is right along the edge of the letter. And you want to go ahead and just let each individual tab dry a little bit before you move on. Just take your time and it'll come together a lot cleaner and easier. I'm going to do the same thing and just individually, one at a time, do my best to put the back on. Before you finish closing up your letter, you want to put something inside to give it some weight. Like I put some flax seeds inside my letters because I didn't have any like dried beans laying around. If I had beans, I would definitely do beans because I think they're less susceptible to like mice maybe getting into them in storage if you, you know, store these. Um, but whatever works. I just do like, I did like five tablespoons of these. So it's not too heavy, but it keeps it upright, especially because the U and the S are round on the bottom. So it really helps a lot. So go ahead and put glue on each tab right up to the edge as close as possible without getting too messy because you won't be able to push it from the other side so you want the glue to really be up against the edge so that the edge is nice and finished. So flip all these tabs up a tiny bit just to be sure that they make contact with the paper when you push it down. And definitely start with the top corners up here first I think because those are less forgiving if you need to move things around a little bit. So here's my finished U and you definitely want to just really take your time with this thing. And I've already got the face of my U put together so I'm just going to glue that right here. And it's going to be super cute with my finished S and my finished A. So there are my finished letters. I totally love how they look. And I just wanted to add one more tip too. I think it's cool if you stick with like all one color per letter, otherwise they might look too crazy if you go like red, white, and blue on each letter. Like so I did, you know, mainly blue here and mainly white here. And this is a fabric flower from American Crafts. And this white, just the white kind of blends in. If I would add like a red ribbon, it would just kind of be starting to border on too much. So I hope you have fun with this. I hope you have an awesome summer and I would love to see any pictures of any of these projects that you make on our Facebook wall or in our forum. So happy crafting. See you next time.